Hello everybody and welcome to another installment of my YouTube digital painting series. Um, this time I will be painting um, some concept art, which is basically, it's a job description where as an artist you are employed by a studio or a client or somebody who needs your skills to develop an idea that they have. So I've basically given myself a, a project brief here, uh, which is kind of an outline. And basically the outline is uh, something to do with uh, castles and landscapes and um, some dramatic light. And uh, basically this could be a shot of a film or a concept for a video game or anything that requires some kind of creative input to determine the look of something. Um, you'll see that uh, these paintings are loose and hopefully they're kept fairly fresh and they're just meant to to explore an idea uh, that you know might eventually go into production or might eventually inspire uh, other ideas so I had no um, planning for this you know I, I, like I said all I knew is that it had to be something to do with castles and uh, you know sitting in some kind of landscape uh, you I've, uh, painting wise I've already blocked in uh, the light source obviously coming from screen right kind of a raking uh, low uh, light. This could be sort of a morning. I'm thinking of it like a sunrise type of thing or maybe early to mid morning. Um, and I'm just blocking in some basic forms. Now uh, I don't, this being concept art, uh, I had no idea really uh, what the scene was going to look like before I started painting. So I'm really exploring this this scene as I'm painting it. I'm. Um, you'll see me go do a lot of back and forth on things and uh, just find the form as I go. It's kind of a fun way of painting where you don't really know what you're going to come up with. Um, you, you just go in there with sort of a bare skeleton idea of, of, uh, of a plan and then you, you know, within that you allow yourself the freedom to come up with something. Uh, it definitely uh, takes some, some practice to be comfortable doing this. Uh, luckily I've done a lot of study where I knew exactly what, what I set out to paint so this kind of thing is actually quite fun. Anyway, uh, just doing a quick levels adjustment there. Uh, so the light source is blocked in, and at this point, the composition overall is pretty much there. I mean, things are gonna, I'll add things, I'll take things away, but this, this composition is there. Uh, I just uh, used an airbrush to block in some of the big light sources coming in. Um, my, my thinking is, I want to establish a full range of value. There's basically two things in a picture, in a painting, that I want to achieve early on. One is composition where things go, how big things are, you know, the relationship of shapes, of big shapes to each other, that's composition. Uh, and the second thing I want to achieve is um, my range of value, meaning how dark I'm going to go and how light I'm going to go. You know, determining the two, uh, those two benchmarks. Because from there, I then have uh, a whole sort of playground to work within. Whereas if you start painting, and this is a common mistake that I used to make, if you start painting, um, and you don't have those that value range established, the second you start painting, if you start painting one thing, you don't have it established, then you move on to another area and say you go like all, all of a sudden you go really darker, much darker with it. Um, the image will become fragmented, like it's not part of a, a whole, like a, not part of a cohesive lighting setup. Um, so establishing a full range of value and big shapes early on really is the solution to that. So your painting will look like like a whole piece very quickly. And um, I talk about that in some of my other videos too. Just trying to get the picture to read, you know, as soon as I can. Um, basically what I'm playing with now, this video is, is fairly sped up. Uh, I think this painting was about two hours. Uh, it actually took me about two hours to do, you know, sped up to just under 10 minutes. So it's quite a dramatic um, fast forward. But I, you know, it's my YouTube, um, my YouTube restrictions. I only have 10 minutes. I should mention that uh, I just put out another video. I just released a book, and it's an it's a typical art of book with some of uh, some of my art, 45 pages of art. But it also has um, a DVD attached to it. Uh, the first 250 copies of the book have a DVD, and that DVD contains videos just like this one, but they're exclusive to the book and they're much longer. They range from like 25 minutes to half an hour, and in those videos, I get more in depth into things. Whereas the videos like this, I can only scrape the surface. Anyway, what I'm doing right there is upside down right now. You can see what what that is is um, when I flip a painting upside down, it actually um, it does something very interesting. It takes all the literalness away from the painting. So 
you know, when it's, you're looking at it right side up, you can tell what it is. It's castles and building structures. But when it's upside down, I don't really see any of that. I just see it as a abstract painting. It's just an abstract painting of color. So when I flip it upside down, I can actually gauge my color harmonies and really see what they're doing as their own abstract thing. So I remove them from representing buildings and castles in this case, and they're just colors that are working together. And um, um, I actually paint upside down sometimes. And when I paint upside down, I'm just adjusting my color temperatures in my palette um, to have, um, to, you know, to follow an overall scheme. And what I mean by that is if you look at this painting, um, if you look at screen left right now, it's a very warm, in the orange family, a very warm light. And as you shift from left to right in this picture, you'll see it goes from oranges into some more reds, which is analogous in the color wheel. So orange to red, moving into some blues, and finally ending up in some violets in the, on the right. And that's done very much on purpose. Um, that is a, a, design, a color palette design that is acting independently of the physical design of the buildings or anything. You see that this picture is hopefully working on a few different levels. One is its composition and its um, the level that it's you know a picture of buildings and castles, but it's also working on an abstract color design level where the color modulates from one thing to another thing throughout the picture, and both of those things require your attention. And um, it's it's um, kind of a tall order sometimes to have them work together. And uh, it's kind of a requirement for me now, whenever I paint now, I, I really want those things to work together to just create a much stronger impact. And uh, it's something that uh, I didn't really clue into in some of my early days of painting. You know, I thought a palette was just colors that you're putting down. But uh, the color palette can actually be quite a, uh, just as sophisticated as any type of drawing you're doing. So just keep that in mind as you explore uh, your own work. Anyway, the foreground I'm just working on, just making sure I'm telling some kind of a story with this. After all, this is concept art, so if you're working for a director or a client, they're usually going to be asking for some kind of story point to be conveyed. In this case, the story point is simply I'm establishing this location, it's like a wide shot. Uh, the foreground contains some castles with a bunch of little lights indicating there's, there's some kind of life there, you know, people with torches or some kind of civilization. And, uh, you know, this, this world is kind of taking shape. Um, <clears throat> at this point, uh, I'm just uh, going over the whole picture. My, my color harmonies are there. The, the, the painting is pretty much, I could leave it finished right now. At this point, I'm probably about an hour and a half into the painting, which is another important aspect of working as a concept artist professionally. You often don't have a lot of time to work on these pictures because you want to, you want to do more than one painting, right? It's not like you're going to hit the correct idea in your first shot. So uh, you move quick, and it requires some experience to do that and just a lot of practice. But uh, that's the whole idea. And when you move quickly, an uh, interesting byproduct of that is your paintings tend to have more life. At least mine do. When I labor over a painting, the life can get sucked right out of it. Uh, when I paint this type of work, I feel like I'm always in a block-in mentality. And uh, what I mean by that is I never feel like I'm putting down finished brush strokes. I don't like to think that way. I like to think like I'm always um, just putting down clay and sculpting it around and everything is always subject to change. And then, you know, after a couple hours when I feel like the picture's working, I just, I just leave it. I say I'm done and I leave it. You know, I, I don't get attached to these things. And uh, I, because I find that whenever I do get attached to a painting, it suffers. And it's just a fact that I cannot get over. So you might as well just do it this way where you're, you just train yourself to stay in the block in mentality. Don't fall in love with your work. And um, ironically, that will actually make your work stronger. And that's from my experience. And I've you know, met a lot of other painters who would agree with that. Uh, anyway, just refining some last details and some of the bushes and the grass and just, you know, working over the whole sketch, adjusting small color harmonies, color temperature shifts. I've talked about warm and cool light before. You can check out my painting fundamentals video for that. And, uh, and that's about it. So as usual, thank you very much for watching. I really hope that this was informative and you're able to apply some of this stuff to your own work. Um, feel free to check out the book and the DVD if you're interested, and I will see you soon.